Hello and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be taking on the exterior of the BMW X1. If you remember back to the last video or a few videos back where we took on the interior, it's now time to get on and crack on with the exterior. I've also noticed some potential parking scrapes that have happened and I want to get the car really thoroughly washed down and just inspect the whole car and all the paintwork for any kind of scratches and damage that I'm going to need to work on. And after that I've got four different glass coatings that I'm going to apply to the front windscreen and we can just compare them and see how they get on over the summer months. Let's crack on with the detail and the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the tyres with Auto Glands Rebound. If you've picked up on me spraying an absolute ton of rebound on the tyre it's because I'm coming to the end of a bottle and I've got a fresh bottle sitting on the shelf. I really enjoy using this product, so I went and bought another bottle. Plus it was on sale in County. Normally I wouldn't do two hits using the Rebound because I trust it as a product, but the wheels were quite dirty and the car's not been washed in a while, so I thought I would do two hits. And I didn't need the second hit anyway, it came up nice and white, so the tyres were clean. But it's good just to have that peace of mind. Moving on to the actual wheels themselves, and it looks like my K-Foamer needs a filter changed. But anyway, I'm using the Squid Ink Blue Lagoon wheel cleaner in the IK Foamer. I would normally just use this in a spray bottle, but I thought I'd try it out in the foamer instead. This stuff has an absolutely phenomenal scent to it. And I'm going to be using the EZ Barrel Brushes, the EZ Big Brush for the arches, and I'll be using the Garage Therapy Wheel Wash Mitt to tackle the spokes. Not much to the wheels today, they were quite dirty but the GT1 wheel shampoo would deal with that no problem at all and I say it in every video, these wheels are going to be getting a refurb soon so it is literally just a quick spruce up and then on to the paintwork. So the main focus of today's video eventually is going to be the glass coatings. So no new pre-wash products for me today, it is just going to be the good old Infinity Wax Citrus pre-wash out of that 5 litre pump sprayer, rattling around the car, getting it nice and coated and letting that pre-wash go to work. Now for me, I normally like to apply my citrus pre-wash and then I like to blast it off with a pressure washer and see how much of the grime it's taken away. However, any eagle eyed viewer will spot that it is quite sunny today and the temperature is around about 15-16 degrees so I don't want to take any risks of the pre-wash, the citrus pre-wash drying out on the car so I'm going to crack on and just go straight over the pre-wash with some snow foam. And the snow foam of choice for today is going to be Wax Planet 8 Below. The main reasons being for this is that it has some decent cleaning power and it gives an incredibly thick, long dwelling blanket of foam. Even in that sunlight and in those temperatures, it's still going to give me a good 10 minutes worth of dwell time. So after 10 minutes in direct sunlight and 
like I say, between 15 and 18 degrees. The wax planet, 8 below, was still going strong and to be quite honest, I could probably have given it another 5 minutes or so to let it go to work. But, like always, time was against us on this one. Um, I wanted to get the coatings on the glass, so I just went ahead and started rinsing off. Now I'm going to be putting some completely fresh protection on the car today so I want to get the paint completely stripped down, back down to the paint so I'm going to reach for the product that I tend to always reach for in this scenario which is the Garage Therapy Zero Decon Shampoo. Get this in the wash bucket and away you go. Again this is another tried and tested and proven product for stripping off old protection. And again, with the temperatures today, I'm doing, it's not a panel at a time, but I'm doing areas of the car with the shampoo and then rinsing it off, just so that nothing's drying in on the paint. This next section, I may get a bit of stick for. And what I'm doing is I've, I've already done the fallout remover and the tar and glue remover. The car's black, so you can't actually see anything. So I'm not going to bother showing it. What I'm doing just now is I'm running over the paint with a clay cloth, not a clay bar, a clay cloth and the main reason for that is that the car needs it badly. The paint feels rough as when you run your hand over it and no amount of protection is going to survive any kind of length of time with that and the protection that I'm going to use has a lot of fillers in it so any little swirl marks that I make should be covered up. Just going to show some of the damage that I've found on the car from parking dings to I don't know what the hell the missus is doing there at the petrol cap but a few little scrapes it's going to be polished out and I don't know how to fix that. And just like that we're on to the protection stage already and I'm going to be applying the protection today by machine. What I'm going to be using is a product from Infinity Wax called Turbo 6. It's a cream sealant and it can be applied via machine. This is the first time that I've tried to apply it via machine and to be fair it went on extremely easily. Like I mentioned as well this product has a lot of fillers in it so any little fine swirl marks that you're going to get this product's going to fill them in and once you've leveled it off you're not going to see them. If you are thinking about applying a LSP via machine, make sure that you use a finishing pad, which generally is the softest kind of pad that you can get. A low speed and just take your time going over it. You don't need to go over the area multiple, multiple times. One pass is enough. This is where I started to run into some issues using this product. It was fully cured. I done a finger swipe, it came up clean. So I got my microfiber towel out, short, short pile microfiber towel and started buffing it off and it looked as if it was buffing off no issues whatsoever. As you can see I'm not having to work it overly hard here but what did happen was that it was almost as if the product in the temperature that it was outside just wasn't fully curing and it seemed to be smearing across the panel. I actually had to leave it till later on in the evening and go back out with a buffing, a buffing cloth just to get rid of any little marks that were left on the paint but the paint did come up absolutely fantastic once I worked out what I had to do with it. And finally, the purpose of this video, the glass. So the glass is already clean and I'm starting off with using a glass compound. This is a soft 99 glass compound. I'm using it with a coarse polishing pad or a hand applicator. If you've ever used a glass compound before this one's quite strange what happens is it dries in as you're polishing and you need to actually wash the polishing compound off. After that we got it all taped up, marked out and ready to start applying some coatings. And the first coating on the passenger side upper half of the window is going to be the Soft 99 Glaco. 
extremely easy to apply, just a slight squeeze of the bottle and up and down the window in a cross hatch method. For the driver's side upper half of the window, I'm going to be using the Auto Glance glass coating. Again, very easy to install. This time I'm using a suede applicator. Few drops onto the applicator and again in a cross hatch method across the window. Following on from that is going to be the Pyramid Carbon Glass. Again, very similar application method with a few drops onto the applicator that's provided and a cross hatch method across the glass. This one, however, was the only one that you did have to buff off, not immediately, but relatively soon after application. And then before it was time to apply the fourth coat and it was time to get the glaco off and that is done just using a damp microfiber cloth to remove the residue and then you can just dry up the window once you've got everything all off. Then it was time to move on to the application of the fourth coat which is G-Technic. Now G-Technic in the instructions, if you're using it on a windscreen, says that you need to apply three layers of the coating, which is quite time consuming, but I want to do all these by the, by the instructions, so that's what it's going to get. I'm just showing you one application here. By the time I was done applying the first coat of that, it was time to get the auto glands off, which I think it was between 10 and 15 minutes cure time, and then just a buff off to remove it. A nice and straightforward removal there. When it was time to remove the G-Technic, you actually have to use a, a separate chemical that comes with the G-Technic. It's called a residue remover. You put a few drops of this onto a microfiber cloth and it takes away any residue that's left over on the window. So now I'm 24 hours on from applying the glass coatings. I wanted to see what the water behavior was like in the Turbo 6 and it's quite impressive, it looks cool. But I also wanted to see the water behaviour on the glass coatings. So I just tried to simulate a little bit of rainfall here just to show you how quickly the water is moving off the windscreen. So as a reminder, this area here is the auto glance coating, then the pyramid car care. Moving on over. Nope, I'm not going to show you the other ones for some reason, I'm just going to go straight to the wing. That was a bit silly, wasn't it? Oh no, there we go. Soft 99 and the G Technic. So again, this was a couple of days later, first drive out in the car, it started raining, pulled over and took a quick picture to show what the beading was like, and then further on, onto the motorway to see what the water repellency was like, and it was pretty cool to see actually. I then hopped into a Morrison's car park to get a first window wipe to see if there was any judd or smear, and to be fair there wasn't any. So initial impressions of these four glass coatings are very good, all four seem to be doing well, until I got onto the motorway. This is again, this is another few days later. Driving along the motorway, and it looks like the coat, this is just smear, it's not actually raining, but the coatings to the right hand side seem to be doing a bit of smearing when you're using the window wipers. I've also noticed the two coatings on the driver's side, which is the pyramid at the bottom and the auto glands. They don't seem to move the water away as quickly as the G Technic or the Soft 99. The Soft 99, or Fuso, whatever you want to call it, uh, Glaco, is, repels the water, by far repels the water the best, so far, just in this first week since application. One thing that I have noticed, whilst I've been driving about for that first week of using a glass coating, is that if you're doing anything under 40 miles an hour, the water doesn't move off of any of these coatings. So it kind of begs the question of, do you really need a glass coating if you're not going to be smashing out motorway miles? I don't know, I'll leave that one down to you, leave your answers in the comments, what do you think? Again, this is all just initial impressions from my first week of usage. I've not washed the car since I've applied them and I've not kind of got any kind of durability out of any of them. So I will be testing it over the next few months and few weeks. I'll provide regular updates as and when I wash the car. But until then, 
I'll leave you with some finishing shots of the X1 once I was finished on the day. I'll take this time to say thank you for watching the video. If you do like this kind of content, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.